K passed in 2001. Oh. Yesterday, yeah. Oh. So that's crazy how that went by. I had just become a national, you know, that December before and had our debut locally in May and then in, uh, in uh, July had it at seminar and then she passed. And then the following year, Mary Kay, the company asked me to come down and be the national to represent and teach at the director week, which I had done many times as a director, but this was my first time to do it as a national. And so I had to sit in obviously her seat in the office and 500 new directors came through. So 500 new directors wow. had their picture with me. I was like Mary Kay to them. It was very humble, humbling. And I thought to myself, because I was glad to do it, but, but I thought, wow, Mary Kay did this every month, sometimes twice a month. She would stand there all day and take her picture with you because she never wanted to disappoint you. And then the company had me teach her classes on ethics and communication. And so to stand there walking in Mary Kay's pumps, you know, was ah. quite incredible, was just uh, beyond words. And it was like a year that she had passed. So, um, wow. yeah, treasured, treasured memories. I feel blessed I had that time with her, but that's why I love to tell you those stories. So you can memorize those stories and say, you know, your national Judy had time with her, your national adopted national Nancy had time with her, many of you met her, um, and just the countless times I had with her, I just wanna pass those stories on, and so, yeah. That like, is we're so great quiet, Nancy. we're just like all quiet, we're like, <gasps> <gasps> You know, what else is she going to tell us? Nancy, yeah. Nancy, that's right. amazing. Nancy's our Mary secrets. Kay. Quiet and listen. Secrets. The magic secrets. You already know. Work. W-O-R-K. <laughs> right? The, the four-letter word work. There's no magic. It's the same at decade after decade. <gasps> right? And, uh, but I, I, I'll wait till everybody gets on, but I'm just so proud of you guys all you're going through through the pandemic i know this is not easy time but you know i've been through four decades of mary Kay, and not to get out your violin but seriously we had in every decade there's been something and so we can yeah. use it to propel us and promote us or we can use it to paralyze us right and technology you guys are amazing i wish i had zoom when i was a top director going for <laughs> national because I built 12 to 15 pockets out of town, how great that would have been to be face to face with those out of town people I was interviewing or recruiting or training. And I traveled the US and the world, but I did tons of trips to go meet my people. But wow, to be able to meet them right away on Zoom and do all the things that you guys are doing, uh, is incredible but as i'll always say to me mary Kay, if she was here would always tell you face to face is the best right eyeball to eyeball knee to knee elbow to elbow um but to me this is like insurance you know insurance you get your insurance policy but then you get supplements based on you and your needs well face to face is always our basic insurance policy right but Zoom is a supplement. Texting is a supplement. Email is a supplement to all of that. And so you guys will be able to carry on with all this Zoom knowledge and stream and beam and Zoom and boom and whatever, all these different names. I'm like, Lisa, she's sharing with me some other stream thing. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> I, you know, I, okay, I'm always willing to learn, but this is crazy. So you guys are amazing what you're doing. I'm just, I have to salute you and I'm proud of you. And I know it takes big girl panties. I know it takes attitude of gratitude. I know it takes getting up and fighting emotions and fighting w words you hear and news and all of it, you know, but just know I get it because we all went through it in a different way. 
same but different, different but same. And uh, it's the want to and the got to bigger than the not to. You know, I'm always going to tell you I'm not real fancy smancy and you're going to hear Nancyisms, right? But uh, <laughs> when the want to and the got to is bigger than the not to, you're going to make it happen. Look at all of you. You're, you're proof. You're proof. And about the time someone says it can't be done, Miss, I'm going to make it happen, just smoked by, right? Yep. Yeah. And so that, that is the good news in Mary Kay. And, you know, one of my favorite things was when I went to my first seminar in 1982, was seeing every excuse walk on stage. Every excuse. About the time you thought, oh, I broke my toe and I got my toe in a little cast, somebody in a body cast was rolled on stage, right? <laughs> and about the time you, you think, oh my gosh, I've got five children, how can I ever do this? Somebody has 22 children on stage, you know? And so about the time you think I'm too short, there's someone shorter, too tall, someone taller. Every excuse walks on stage, right? I mean, that truly is the blessing of us always getting together and seeing about the time you think I'm too young, too old, you see somebody younger, somebody older, you know, Mary Kay's ageless. How many 80 year old women are going on Mary Kay top director trips? Are you kidding me? Do you see that anywhere else in any other company? No, you know, and um, so just anyway. I don't, I don't, I don't mean to get started, but I'm excited to be on. I haven't, I haven't been talking Mary Kay for a little bit, except my coaching calls I'm doing with people. So this is cool. <laughs> this is so great, Nancy. This is so great. So the people, so everyone's on, on time and okay. I'm watching some of their faces like, oh my gosh, did I miss something? Did I miss something? Oh. No. Well, that's why you come on time because you never know what'll be yeah. said. Yeah. Yeah. Your national sales director emeritus just started going and that's that's what happens when you get a national man anywhere near you you just get ready you just get ready <laughs> wind her up i so, ate my m and i'm ready to go <laughs> yes yes okay so we are going to get started and this is just super exciting to have you nancy um we've got 24 participants and wow we have whoever was that 24th, then um, Cece. Um, um, Cece, what do you have? Is, let's see, Andrea and Cece are gonna help me um, keep track of people that might need to be muted that are coming on um, unmuted. And Cece, if you could please, She's going to do a drum roll. It's not really a drum roll. It's more like the tickets are in a sleigh and she's going to pull a name because you guys were on by 658. Cece, we're ready. And the winner is Dory Anderson. Yay! Dory, Dory Anderson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not only is she on time, she was the very first one. She beat me on. So, queen of the world. Queen of everything. Congratulations, Mama. She's over here, I think. <laughs> I think she's over here. This way <laughs> on the screen. I think that's where she is. Congratulations, Mama. Yay, Mama. You'll get something good from us. You know it. <laughs> you know it. And then uh, we've got a personal announcement that we need to share because. Miss Katie Sikorsky in the house. Okay, we're putting her on spotlight. Put that ring right up to the screen. Put it up there. Uh -huh. Oh! Look at, look at, look at. Oh, my heart. <laughs> Katie, we are so excited for you. Aw, you're engaged. So exciting. Just so exciting. Katie, you are, Katie's looking sugar sharp. Man, like, she sugar. is. Ooh, look at Miss Cece. You're sugar sharp. <laughs> you told us. Ooh, Ooh look at it. doing the right thing. We are doing it. We are, you are doing it. We're doing everything you said to do because that's what we are, right? Courage Nation, we're great listeners and we're great leaders mm -hmm. and we're great followers, right? Sure. Absolutely. Okay, so... Um, 
As we are celebrating our thankful celebration, I wanna thank each and every one of you for joining us this evening. Thank you for giving us of your time. Thank you for having your pen and your paper and your notes ready to go. Um, Nancy is going to, we're gonna, we're gonna do recognition and a couple other things and then Nancy's gonna share. And she's just gonna go and go and go and we're just gonna let her talk as long as she wants to. So we might go past eight o'clock tonight. It's all good if we do, right? It's all good if we do. And um, God willing and everything, I've got this recording a couple different places. So hopefully that's all happening. <laughs> and uh, I apologize, you had to go in the waiting room. That is not exactly what is supposed to be happening right now. Um, but I have a new account. So it's just all gonna work, right? Cause I did a lot of praying. Yay. A lot of praying in advance. We know this is going to go great. And we just so truly enjoy Nancy spending her time with us and um, just sharing her wisdom and her love and her heart. And she's the best one. She's the best mm -hmm. one at it, too, I might add. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> Muchas gracias. <laughs> All right. Um, Cece, can you please do a little bit of housekeeping for us. Yes, so happy Monday, everyone. Thank you all so much for being on, being on timely, being on happy, excited, uh, most of the video, that is awesome. We love to see that. So thank you so much for uh, being prepared in advance. We really appreciate that. Of course, um, continuing our fluidity, we'll just ask that you remain muted for the duration. We'll make sure that Nancy has um, all of the audio, of course, on her. And then if you do need to um, leave your post, <laughs> if you need to abandon post for any reason, we ask that you just please turn off your video. Um, we don't want to look at your empty chair or your ceiling fan. So just please uh, <laughs> or leave off, and leave off video if that be the case. Um, watch your brightness. Uh, many of you look fabulous. Just make sure that you have a nice bright light on your face so you can work that out somehow. I've had to do some creative things to make sure that that happens because um, we want to see you, of course. And then um, just make sure you're seated and comfortable at a desk or table, got your pen and pencil ready to go, pen and notebook. Um, we really appreciate um, that you guys are attentive and excited. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I was already writing some things down as Nancy was just chatting at the beginning there. I'm like, oh, oh that's good. <laughs> Oh, that's good. So, um, feedback. We love to be able to look back um, on this event and be able to affirm Nancy appropriately. So, thank you so much for your attendance. Uh, attendance, sure. Attention to that. Done. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, very good, Cece. Very good. Thank you. All right. Um, we are going to move on next to some recognition this evening, ladies. Also, accidentally, I figured out how to get music onto the broadcast. So oh, cool. next time, um, you'll have a little Christmas music in the background, Angela. Oh. And Dory accidentally helped me figure that out. So that was good. So uh, we're going to start with some recognition. And Nancy, you, I know, are so proud of everybody. The oh, recognition yeah. that they're going to receive, the people that are getting the recognition, like, all of this all of the things we have to recognize they're like all on so it's really great it's really great so the first recognition we're going to start with you guys is if you are um if you have not yet earned your spark um earrings oh right look at look at andrea putting her whole face up there showing you too yeah look at dory dawn sandy yeah the earrings okay all right so if you've not yet earned them, but you are on target with at least 300 wholesale or more, would you please put your hand up right by your face and give us a big wave, 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 wave. Okay, great. Maggie, Brittany, Tracy, Maggie, Whitney. Did I get them all? Okay, yes, okay. Now, those of you that have already earned your spark earrings, you are already a spark achiever. Throw that hand up there. Look at, look at, let's celebrate Dory, Angela, Katie, Ashley, Rhonda, Dawn, Sandy, Kelly. Yes. All right. Congratulations to you guys. Oh, and Felicia. I know Felicia already has two. She just doesn't ever face. Well, she does ever face on. It's just not the live face. Oh, there she is. She's working on it. Okay. Very good, you guys. Um, then let's recognize our on-target stars. And I actually am gonna call you out 
So when your name is called, you just you just put that up there and you just keep it there, all right? Because Nancy wants to see all of you again. Yes. So we're going to recognize, first of all, those of you that are on target with 1,200 or more, let's recognize Felicia, Maggie Sherwin, Dawn Emanuele, Kelly Strasser, keep those hands up there, girls, 1,400 or more, Maggie Fortman, and then already stars, because I know Nancy loves to see this, already stars, Judith, Angela, Sandy, Rhonda, Ashley, Steph G, Ruby Star, Katie Sikorsky, Diamond Star, Whitney Schleyline, Emerald Star, Lisa Jessen, and already Pearl Star with 6,100 wholesale, Dory Anderson. Let's give it up for the stars and on target stars. Woo! Woo! And that's just the ones we read. I mean, there are so many that are, you guys, I know. This is the quarter to do it. This is the quarter to do it because if you're local, we might even go to dinner on December 17th at Hot House. If the world should say we're allowed to, put it on your calendar. We're not bringing husbands this time or significant others because, you know, we're going to follow the rules and not have more than 20. And we'll probably sit the whole length of the banquet room at the Hot House and split us all apart because we can. So, Put December 17th on your calendar, stars and would-be stars, and hopefully we'll go to dinner. How about that? I'll look in the right place now. Does that sound good? <laughs> okay, then, da, 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 let's do some more because we got great things happening in the MAC unit, in the RISE unit, in the Gracie Elney unit. So, Nancy, we got a new challenge from On Target Million Dollar Sales Director, I can't remember her name, but it's a really cute name. <laughs> to sell 30 items in 15 in the first 15 days by November 15th. These yeah. ladies kill it. Killed it, you guys. I want you to put your hands up big and proud and loud for all of our selling 30 items in 15 days achiever. We've got awesome. Dory, Katie, Whitney, Ashley, Maggie Sherwin. We also have, of course, all of your offspring. Andrea, Cece, and your senior director, Lisa, because awesome. it's fun. So fun. Just so fun, you guys. I'm so proud of you guys. Um, the first one to finish it was Felicia Cotter, who is a new consultant, Nancy. Okay. She, brand new. She did it first, and then I challenged her to double it. I don't know what happened there. She may have. And then Jen Gurry was close to doubling, if not already doubling. And then Dory Anderson, can we just give a shout out to the queen? The humble queen who didn't post her stuff, but just kept sending it to me. Yeah, she did like 60 items in the first 10 days. Mom. Uh, mom. Shout out. Woo! Shout out. Woo! Shout out. All right, and then more recognition because in October, you'll remember that the company offered a, or not offered, but had a 1 million hostess challenge, right? And then every week they were giving prizes away to those beauty consultants that posted their hostesses' names. In the first week, Jordan Herzog from the Rise Unit won. Second week, Katie Sikorsky in the Mac Unit won. Third week, Angela Keenest in the Rise Unit won. <laughs> In the fourth week, Whitney Schleyline in the back <laughs> unit won. And then overall, as if that's not cool enough, the company recognized the top 250 beauty consultants with the most parties held in the month of October. And our very own star team builder, Sandy Stickland, was in the top 250. She held seven shows in the month of October. Congratulations, Sandy. What, what did they send you something yet? What did you get? Mute, you're mute. Okay, um, I think I get it actually tomorrow. I believe it's a bull purse. Ooh, wow. kind of a bull purse. I don't know if it's a little one or a big tote yet. Oh, wow, how so exciting. surprised! I'll post it though. Oh, so exciting! So exciting! Congratulations to you! you. Mm, so good. Um, now let's go to sales count up for the week okay because 
I know there are open houses out there. There are so many great things happening. You guys are posting great things. So we're going to do a sales count up right now. So we're going to put our hands up and we're going to start with you opened your business last week. You sold anything. You put your hand up high because you sold something. Congratulations. It is the time. It is the time. Look at CC's going like this because that's everybody. I love it. I love it, you guys. I love it. Love it. All right. Those of you with 100 or more, keep your hand raised. Keep it high. I love it. Congratulations, you guys. 200 or more. Oh, yeah. Keep them raised. 300 or more. We know that stars, that's where the action is, right? We're your star consultants. 400 or more, keep them raised so far. Look at this, we've got, we, got, we got Maggie and Dory. I know they were having some open houses. 500 or more, keep them raised. Congratulations, Maggie. Dory, 600, 700, 700, 500, 500, 500 and something. Congratulations, Queenie. Congratulations to you. Congratulations to all of you. I know that you guys got a lot of great things happening this week. I know you got Pink Friday coming up, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday. I know you guys got some great things coming up. We've, we've been talking. I know we do. Nancy, these women are on fire. I know. Jumping on it, right? Okay. Then we're going to do a little red, a little red reco. Okay. We're going to do a little ranking. First of all, um, we are going to welcome back. Miss Dawn Emanuele back into the red. You could see her sporting her fabulous nice. red jacket. Dawn Emanuele is no stranger to her red jacket, nor stranger to red anything, as obvious by looking at her. Congratulations, Dawn. Love having you back where you belong. Love it. All right, so we're going to recognize our Courage Nation Reds. We're going to rank them. This is as of 11.23, as in today, November 23rd, at around five o'clock this evening. So, number nine, Whitney Schleyline. Number eight, Maggie Fortman. Number seven, Rhonda Deaver with over 1,100 in team production so far. Maggie Sherwin, number six, with over 1,400 in production so far. Number five, back in red, Donnie Emanuele with over 1466 in team production so far. Get this, team leader, number four, Kelly Strasser, only 33 wholesale away from being team 2K. Number four, only $33 away from 2000 production. And top three ladies already at team 2K. Number three, team leader B-Rad with over 2,001 wholesale production for her team. Number two, star team builder, 2108, Dory Anderson. And number one, who's Dory's red jacket, creating a thread of red, number one, Sandy Stickland, Team 2K, 2,171 team production already. Oh my gosh, Sandy, Dory, Sandy and Dory have already earned the top 8% commission that they can earn this month. And I know that B Red and Kelly as team leaders are on their way as well. So exciting, so exciting. Love the red ranking. Do you love the red ranking? I love the red ranking. Yes. Good. Very good. They especially love it when they're at the top. If they're facing <laughs> towards the bottom, they're like, no, I'm going to fix that. I know, you guys. It's all good. It's all good. All right. Then, oh, so much. Andrea and Cece, I am up to <clears throat> Andrea goes next. Have I remembered it all? Do I need to share anything else? Not that I can think of, Lisa. Whew. All right. So far, so good. All right. I am going to spotlight Andrea then we will be spotlighting our very special speaker. So take it away, Andrea. All right, I gotta get my glasses on for this because it printed out really teeny tiny. <laughs> <laughs> um, but first of all, Nancy, you just look so amazing. Like I love oh. your jacket, you just look super <laughs> fabulous. And I've oh. loved watching you over the years and I just have to show everybody this. Uh-oh. 
Oh, you went to that. I was there. Oh, and I kept this. (laughs) Anytime I went through my files and cleaned things out, I never would dispose of (laughs) it. Oh, major suck up points. (laughs) <laughs> with your national. <laughs> I mean, I just loved reading through this and just your special messages. And you can really tell that you have a heart of gratitude. Um, and I have been the recipient of your special heart. And thank you for welcoming, welcoming me with open arms to your training center years ago as a new director. And I just, I still remember words that you shared with me that like shaped my thinking and my approaching people. And I just really treasure you. Uh, So thank you. you. But now I have the privilege, I'll get these on again, of sharing some accolades of this woman who we are so privileged to be in the company of this evening. So Nancy, first of all, is a dynamic speaker, teacher, and mentor. And she is a leader who develops and trains other leaders as Mary Kay Ash trained her. Working as a dental hygienist, pursuing a master's in speech pathology, Nancy felt she was too shy with low self-esteem to begin her own business. I think that's one of the reasons why I have always watched you because I can relate to that. She signed her agreement as a backup in option and choice in October 25th of 1981. Nancy's first year working six to 10 hours per week with her business, holding two to three appointments, built the foundation for her future. Only two years after signing her agreement, she debuted as a sales director in December, 1983. Wow. Nancy's, um, as a sales director, Nancy led her unit to the circle of excellence nine times. And in 1993, her unit was number five in the whole Ruby seminar. In 1994, her unit was number four and achieved 1.1 million smackaroos. And in 1995, her unit was number three in the Ruby Ruby seminar and achieved 1.2 million in unit sales, which ranked them number five in the entire Mary Kay world. (laughs) Woo! Her unit achieved unit club every year and was ranked the number one unit in the McCoy National Area 12 out of 15 years. Holy buckets. Her most coveted award is the honor bestowed upon her as the company Miss Go Give in March of 1990. Nancy also received the Woman of Influence Award from the Milwaukee Business Journal in 1999 as voted by her peers. Wow. Wow. Yes. On December 1st, 2000, she debuted as a national sales director and led her area to the gold circle 12 years. Nancy is proud to be a member of the multimillionaire club, earning $4 million during her director, national sales director career. Her highest commission check for one month was $24,950. So that means that her combined income that month was $34,500. <laughs> Okay, that's girl size pay. Yes. Uh, So she has been awarded 16 pink Cadillacs throughout her career. So like you never had a car payment like ever. Never. (laughs) And Mary Kay Inc. sent Nancy to several countries to pass on her Mary Kay wisdom, including Taiwan, Sweden, and London. Mary Kay has allowed her to travel the world, enjoying five-star luxury vacations each year with her national girlfriends. Some of her favorites have been to Hong Kong, England, Ireland, Venice, Milan, and Bellagio, Italy, Germany, Austria, Greece, and Spain, Paris, Hawaii, and Beijing, China. So because of her Mary Kay career, she has traveled to over 45 countries and, out of, and six out of seven continents. Yeah. So Nancy retired as a National Sales Director Emeritus in January of 2017 and is married to Dan Hogan. They have seven grown children and seven grandchildren. So Nancy is also a breast cancer survivor of seven years. We're so grateful. And her passion is mentoring women and developing leaders, truly. 
Nancy's purpose is inspiring women to carry on Mary Kay's dream for all women to enrich and empower their lives, keeping God first, family second, and career third in that order. So from Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, <laughs> Can we please give a very warm welcome to Sales Director Emeritus, Nancy Moser Hogan. Ah, yay. So can y'all see me? Am I on the screen then, Lisa, or how are we working this? Yep, you are going to be our oh, spotlight video. Oh boy, I hope I use my concealer and everything. That is a big screen. <laughs> yes, you look amazing. No, seriously. Like, seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aww, mm -hmm. Too fun. Look at that picture behind me, you guys. That's a, a scene of a woman and man in Paris. And uh, it just reminds me of the top director trip in Paris and the street we were on when I found this picture. So just wanted to bring some of that Mary Kay to you. And I know that you all asked a bunch of questions. So uh, I know Lisa is going to kind of um, leave yes. that, but I just thought I'd say a few words to, to start before we go into those questions. First of all, thank you so much for asking me to be a part. I'm so humbled every time you guys ask me, and I want to give 100% to y'all. And Lisa, I really don't mind if people are on and not muted. Eventually, if we want to ask questions or whatever, I sure, know you sure. guys will be there 100%. But sometimes I always... Uh, disliked uh, conference calls for that reason when people would mute because I felt like I was talking to the wall, you know, yes. and I love these because I love to hear real life people and see real life people and voices. But anyway, I just adore your directors and I love each of you that I've already known and been with so many times. And of course, the new people who are on and I just, I'm here always to give you humble hope that I'm nobody so-called special. I just took that starter kit and kept moving with it. And, you know, that's really, uh, I know that sounds simple, but it's really a key to success that you just keep moving, keep working, keep committed, keep both feet on the same side of the fence. And that's not easy through the ups and downs and whatever of life. I mean, I've been through four decades in Mary Kay. In the 80s when I started, you guys, it was Mary Kay who? The company was only 18 years old. They didn't know what Mary Kay was. Dermatologists were telling people to stay on soap and water. I mean, seriously, not to get your violin out. But we had to sell. And, you know, women weren't going into sales in the 80s. I was a hygienist. People were nurses, teachers, pharmacists, you know, secretaries. We weren't going. We weren't in sales. So it was really a challenge because people would laugh at you. And, of course, they definitely laugh at the Pepto-Bismol pink, pink Cadillacs. But we didn't care. You know, they were bigger than a ship and Pepto-Bismol pink, but it was a $40,000 free car. Who cared? You can laugh all you want, right? And actually we loved it because the seas parted as we came onto the freeways because everybody was going. And so we just went flying onto the freeway and because we had places to go and people to see. So we really had to kind of sell in the 80s. And the 90s, people were now getting into skincare. Doctors were saying being on skincare. We had it better because people knew, even if they weren't on skincare, they should be using it. And yet we had wars times and recession times and all that. But the good news is, as Mary Kay always taught us, the three most popular things in war and depression and whatever are alcohol and tobacco, which we won't talk about, but cosmetics. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you put it on in the morning, wash it off at night. So it's consumable. When I considered Mary Kay in 1981, my dad said, if you're going to go into sales, make sure it's healthcare and make sure it's consumable. Mm -hmm. And so you are in the right place at the right time in the millennial. When the millennium happened, women knew that they were sick and tired of being sick and tired of working at away from the home, 60, 80, 100 hours a week, not even making what they were worth, even doing that. And so the millennium opened for more women, more men owning their own business. The statistics show that about 50% of all people have left high paid, low paid, secure, insecure, part-time, full-time jobs to go back to traditional values. 
and own their own business in their home. So that opened up so much for you guys. And now in the super millennium, in the 2020, you know, uh, you already knew what it was like to work out of your home. Mm -hmm. Now these women who have been forced to do it and really also homeschool their kids, which God bless them, my poor kids would have been um, mentally challenged if I would have had to, you know, school, homeschool them. But at least my son, John, he had a 34 out of 36 ACT, so he could have homeschooled Jesse and Jenny for me. But <laughs> seriously, um, they got a taste of this now. So for you to be able to ask everyone to listen and hear their options, this is a big hope, you guys. And I want you to write the word hope down on your paper. And let me tell you what hope works out to be. What's that called when you do that? Anyway, it, yes. H stands for hold. O stands for on. P stands for pain. And E stands for ends. So hold on, pain ends. So every decade, every challenge, you know, we hold on and pain ends. And look what you guys are doing right now. I mean, Andrea and her unit are doing great things. You are so close to being a career car unit, director car unit. Cece, oh my gosh, you guys just picked up your um, Equinox. I never remember all these names. I know, I just know FRE free, right? And so <laughs> you just picked up that. Lisa, you had squillion pink Cadillacs, but now your unit is officially on target for the $650,000 club. Uh, you know, the patience and persistence and all that you've been doing. There are people doing so many great things. You guys, you have a senior director who has gone before you. And you know what? You don't have to be me or Lisa, but emulate the things we did to get here. You know, you got to be the best you, but hey, I wasn't stupid. I emulated the things that people did to get there and I wasn't too dumb to doubt here. I just really, that's all I did is watch my mentors and kept going. So I salute Lisa. She's always been humbled and humbled to learn. And again, I just appreciate you all so much. But, you know, I started in 1981 when when there wasn't really much in sales. And so I started with a dream and a purpose in my heart to make money for my mom. And so when your purpose is clear, all fear will disappear. And you can replace fear, that word fear, with doubt, frustration, negativity, you know, comparison, stinking thinking, all of that. But you know, when your purpose is clear, and when my purpose wasn't so clear, <clears throat> which is one of the answers, <clears throat> excuse me, to one of the questions you asked me, what did you do when you kept, when things were rough? You know, here's what I did always. I relied on the product because look at the product. We look pretty good. You know, I put this on at what, five this morning. We look pretty good for seven at night, right? The product's a miracle drug. It's, it's fabulous. And so I would rely on the product that women wanted it. And I knew I could put it on their face and create that magic feeling and be face to face and heart to heart and listen to their souls of what they wanted for their family. And who touches more lives than Mary Kay Beauty Consultants who get into the home of women. And so being an inspector close to, so I looked around in people's homes and thought, you know, what would be their needs? And I'd watch them with their families. And so this product, I always relied on the product and when I couldn't rely on myself and I doubted, I relied on the marketing because like it or not, you know, there are people who have earned cars in Mary Kay. So if somebody can earn a car, I can too, right? So I relied on the marketing. There's people who are millionaires. I'm one of them in front of you. Who would have ever thought I would earn 4 million in commissions? I humbly say that. And money doesn't buy happiness, but it does buy choices and options. I'm putting my grandkids college funds. You know, my kids went to college debt-free thanks to Mary Kay Pink Cadillacs. So earn those cars. You can do wonderful things with the money. Give to your church. I wasn't giving to my churches a whole lot because I didn't have a whole lot of extra. But Mary Kay's different ways to make money and bonuses allowed me to give more to the poor. Right now, I just wrote, I think, $2,000 of checks to the missions and the poor and St. Jude's and all of that because I want to and because I can. And so if you don't need the money, somebody else does, but you know, rely on the marketing. 
the marketing is proven, the product is proven, who's being tested? And that's us, you guys. It's just us to get up every day. And you have everything going for you. And you know, Mary Kay Ash used to say this phrase and some people get really tripped up on it, but she would say, she would point to people on stage. And I remember the years she did this the first time in front of me, I was only like probably 27 years old. And I was at that seminar and she said, she had uh, Mary McDowell, who was probably 88 at that point on stage with her. And here's Mary Kay in her seventies and Mary McDowell in her seventies. And Mary was queen of sales. She had sold a squillion million, I don't know. And so here they are on stage in their little gowns, these two little old women, they looked old to me at that point, and their little purses and the whole bit. And Mary Kay looked out at the crowd and she said, what do we have that you can't have fixed? And it was like the light bulb went on. It's like, you're right. What do they have that we can't have fixed? Is it my attitude that needs fixing? Is it, you know, I didn't know Gucci from Hoochie, so I had to fix my outer appearance. I had to learn to wear a business suit and look professional and do my nails and all those good things. Learn eyeliner, you know, so it didn't look like you did Joe's, eat at Joe's, eat at Joe's. Fix my three <laughs> eyebrows. You know, I had to learn all that. I had to learn to run a business and yet, what did they have that I couldn't have fixed? And so if you're always beating yourself up, just go fix it. And, you know, sometimes people will say to me, well, I need to work on myself first. I'm like, are you kidding? I couldn't afford to work on myself first. When my husband lost his job, I had to pay our bills. So I fixed myself and ran and worked at the same time I was working on me. And so that this is a self-improvement course you've been paid to take. You know, I was comp I was shyer back then. Now I'm confidently shy, thanks to Mary Kay. And so, you guys, Mary Kay is what we can count on. You know, I could count on it in 40 years. And so I appreciate this business. I love this business with all my heart. I'm not in the pink pasture yet. Thank you for using me so that I'm not going into the mental pink pasture. And so we love what we do. You don't give it up after 40 years just because I'm so-called semi-retired, you know, uh, you want to pass it on. And so I, I hope that that gets us started a little and just tells you where I came from. You know, my husband did lose his job my second year in Mary Kay. And that's when I had guts to quit my job and become a director because I had been to seminar. I'd seen these women on stage, no different than me, who made it work. And I thought, well, I can't chase two rabbits and catch one. And so I quit my job and became a director that second year. And of course, I had to pay the bills. So I had to lead my unit to the Cadillac position. Mary Kay said that's where you earn 50000 or more. You know, I had to lead my unit. I had great women. I wanted to lead them to their dreams and their cars and financial security and being the best they could be and stepping out of their comfort zone. And so I just was obsessed with taking people to the next level for all the right reasons. And then one of my biggest reasons was I wanted Mary Kay to know me. I wanted to be with her. I wanted to travel with her. I wanted her to know that she could count on me to hold her heritage high and her ethics and standards. And so that, that's one of the questions that I'll answer in a little bit. So anyway, that's kind of my humble beginnings. And I've been through debt. My husband and I were in debt 150000 I've been through losses of my father as a top director in five short months. I've been through breast cancer. I've been through illnesses with my children and things. I've been through a divorce, which wasn't part of my dream after 30 years of marriage. Are you kidding me? I wanted to say to him, are you kidding? We got through all the tough stuff. Are you kidding? Now our life's going to be even fun, even more fun. You know, our kids are grown, but life happens sometimes. So you can either buckle or you can rebound, you can even either be bitter or better. And I chose to move on from that. I thought I would probably be a nun at that point because I thought who's, you know, now I'm in my fifties, are you kidding? <laughs> and yet, um, you know, God blessed me with a wonderful man, Dan the man, we called him DIQ, Dan and Qualification. Yeah. And we've had a great, I can't believe we've been together 16 years and married for six. And that's just crazy. 
So we just never know what tomorrow can bring. We just never know. And we just have to stay faithful and love our business. And here's, here's the big line. You can write this down. Even at its most challenging, even at its most challenging, Mary Kay's still the best. Still the best. Because you've got the choices. You can pick that case back up and go dazzle another face. You can share with another woman, you guys. When you're locked in to working for someone else, well, what can you do about that? Other than quit and go find another job, well, then you're overqualified because you've worked for so long for somebody else. And who's going to rehire you and start paying you that more money, you know? So you love your job. That's fine. I'm not saying quit it. But do whatever you want to do in your Mary Kay and do it to the best of your ability. If you're a part-time consultant and you love that, then do it 100% to the best of your ability. If you're a red jacket and you see this as your future, then maybe it's time to get have guts and get out of the ruts and go full time and have that freedom and flexibility as you watch. I salute Dory. Oh my gosh. You know, Dory and I are young seniors. And so look what all that woman has done in her Mary Kay career. And so what, what a tribute to aging gracefully and healthily and all you've done, Dory, and the positive attitude you show everyone. I mean, I love that. So anyway, do you want to, I hope that gives you a little start and do you want to start asking me questions? <laughs> Yes, but I don't want to ever interrupt you ever in the history of knowing you. I never, oh, ever, no. ever, ever, ever. Oh, um, yes. Okay. So some of them actually in your sharing, I was looking at our questions from a lot of people already. And in some of your sharing, you've actually been answering some of them. Um, I would actually like to start officially with uh, Red Jacket Kelly Strasser, who asked, what is your yeah. favorite part of working your business during the holidays? Yeah. Well, here's the scoop. I started in October of 1981. I became a director in December of 1983. And I became a national sales director in December of 2000. And then I retired in December of 2016. So do you know what my favorite months in Mary Kay are, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't ever tell me things can't be done during these months, you guys. It's just, if you have a goal and deadline, you will get out there and work and see the people see the people. But what I love the most, I think, is the variety and the joy of the different appointments I would always have. You know, I do a stop and shop. And of course, back then, I started my open house in my home. We didn't have training centers or any of that. We had the hotel. And we'd have an open house on Mondays at our meeting when I became a director. But uh, I put my open house up in October, or the end of October, and I would let people shop through December 24th. And I would just make appointments for them to come because if they had an appointment, they would show. And I wish sometimes the stores would do that with us because if they made the appointment, I would show. Sometimes I get that little sales brochure and I forget Coles was having the sale on Friday because nobody called me and said, Mrs. Moser, when <laughs> would you like to come? Two o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock, you know? But the different appointments, the glamour nights we do, the holiday glamour, the husband shopping. You guys, if you're not calling husbands, I love to get them off the hook. I used to deliver to their office with a balloon and a gift for them. And all these other guys would come up with their checkbooks to buy from me because who's delivering product like that? Who's making the guy look good, you know? And so I, I love that. I love the time with my kids helping me wrap the gifts and set my open house up and the training that I passed to them. And sometimes though, I, I didn't like that they knew so much because sometimes my girls would go, mom, you gave her more than you gave her. <laughs> you know, I said, well, she's been a longer customer. So, and then one of my favorites, oh, is New Year's Eve. Okay, when I was raising my kids and we didn't go anywhere on New Year's Eve, we actually did. We went to the movies. We'd do double headers and triple headers back then because we didn't have all the things you have today on TV and the games and stuff. So we went to the movies. My kids, good thing they got good grades in school because they know every line in every movie. <laughs> but um, New Year's Eve all day, I had appointments for my customers to come over and, and me to help them have their their New Year's Eve look for going out. And if they weren't going out, they were staying home with their family. They still came over and got their look and got pampered. And I'd have $1,000 days. 
And my kids and I, we'd count the money and then I'd give them allowance and give them money for helping and then we'd go to the movies. And so if you're not taking advantage of that, I know you have to be creative maybe right now with COVID and you guys are good at that. So whatever I take, you just create it and make it a plan B because um, New Year's Eve can be a great tradition of making people look good for whatever they're going to go out and do. Mm -hmm. And of course you can do Zooms and you can do all that, but that was a lucrative night and a new, uh, lucrative time to end December, right? And so I taught my unit to do that. Of course, once we could do orders online, which didn't happen till the 90s. I mean, that was great that we could now put our orders in till the end. And back then it was just till seven. And then of course the company extended to midnight. So we'd have people like killing to sell more and more and more. And you'd never know who was going to be queen of the month because we were racing to the end on New Year's Eve. That was so exhilarating, you know, and it was so fun to see my people win and, uh, and do that. And our customers, they just love that. So that was probably a long answer, but uh, I love the holidays and I love giving gifts. You know, let me just say this before we go on to the next one. I hope you use your Mary Kay, you guys, to save money for yourself. I always say I can be a star consultant on my left leg, okay? Um, <laughs> I'm still a star consultant. I've been a star consultant every quarter of my career. Not woe to me. I just knew as a beginning consultant with low self-esteem, I didn't think I could ever be top in the company, but I knew I could be a star every single quarter. I knew I could do three classes a week, and sell enough product to be a star. But I knew I could also probably be a Sapphire star on my own body, the kitchen sink, uh, the bathtub, gifts for people. If you're not giving everybody Mary Kay for gifts, I mean, I've got it all lined up in my bedroom for the post office lady. Um, not too long ago, we went to dinner at one of our restaurants that we eat outside at. And I know they've been going through tough times with COVID and so I wrote, I brought Jackie a hand cream and I wrote her a note. And let me tell you um, key words to say to people from your heart. You know, I think the written words more powerful than the spoken, although I say this to her, but when we got there that night, she was going to seat us. And she's so bubbly when I called to make a reservation. And I said, Jackie, you know what? Golden Mass is so lucky to have you. You are so awesome. And you could just tell how many people really give her that compliment. Yeah. And then I gave her this hand cream. And the note I gave her said that too. Golden Mass is so lucky to have you. And then I said it to her manager and her boss. But, you know, how many people are getting appreciated? And little gifts, you guys. Give away your Mary Kay. Give away your Mary Kay. That'll help you be a star right there. Your own body, the kitchen sink, and gifts, right? Because it's, it's the best product and it's less expensive than going to Kohl's and buying something. So, and it's easier and more convenient. I, I mean, you can just wrap it up and have it at home. So anyway, that's part of Christmas. And, and all year long, I love to give gifts. So, okay. Okay. Thank okay. You. <laughs> all right. Uh, Red Jacket Whitney Schleyline from Iowa said, what is something you did or didn't do in the early days of your business that propelled you to success? Something you did or didn't do? Oh, okay, yeah, I, I'm trying to see what did I answer, because I wrote it out. All right, so the first six months in this business, I think we all go through this. I don't think I'm abnormal, but I could be. Um, I think I did it half my way and half Mary Kay's way. Ah. And I had a good business, but do you want a good business or a great business? Mm -hmm. And as soon as I kind of swallowed my pride, I don't think I was overly pride, prideful. I just think I was too dumb to doubt or something. Uh, but it was like, okay, as soon as I just really listened to my director and Mary Kay Ash and did the steps and tried not to reinvent the wheel, uh, my business really took off as a consultant. I, I made 10,000 that first year uh, profit just doing one appointment a week at the meeting. For me, that first year was college in cash. I brought everybody to the meeting because I was working 40 hours as a hygienist. I had two babies and I was going to school for my master's in speech. 
and I was volunteer of the year. I was heavy in the politics of dentistry. I was saving the world's teeth. I was changing the laws of the dentistry thing. And so uh, I had to make Mondays work for me. It was college and cash. If I was going to be away, I brought one, two, three, five guests every week. And so in the beginning, I didn't do that. And so I got smart. And so that first year, because I was making money from my mom, uh, because my mom was divorced and she had never really finished grade school, so she didn't have a lot to even support herself. So I wanted to help her financially because we weren't rich, we weren't poor, but my mom needed the money. So that was my mission and purpose to keep going through thick and thin. And I had disappointments and I had cancellations. You know, our first year is always going to be the hardest in anything, you guys, because our clients are falling in love with us. We're falling in love with them. They're falling in love with the product. We're falling in love with the product. We're trying to figure it out. The second year always gets simpler. And then the third year, you know, I, I always see people back down or back off or quit about the time it's going to take off. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You've done the hard part now. Don't don't stop now. And so I think that that's a key along with I, I wish those first six months I would have just listened to all the steps I was given and tried not to reinvent the wheel. Um, I remember Nancy Joe saying, did you do the correct booking approach? And I said, no. And she said, well, why don't you try it? And I said, well, I don't really want to. I didn't <laughs> think I could say those words. <laughs> and so then I tried it and guess what? I got some results. So uh, I think I think it's partly that. Um, and yet I did do right things. And the right things I did was bringing guests to the meeting. I was too afraid to recruit, to learn the marketing. So I just brought them to Nancy Joe. She recruited my first eight recruits at the meeting. But I learned the marketing by listening to her. So I never went and put away my stuff. I never went and talked to my friends. I listened to her do the marketing with every single guest. So that when a, somebody did ask me, hey, how do you do that business? I spit Nancy Joe out, right? I memorized, I shadowed my director until I made it mine. And that's a key, that is a real key to my success. I'm not afraid. I'm not, not to, I don't have an ego, so I, I don't mind learning and memorizing and being able to spit the director out and then make it mine. Mm -hmm. So uh, I learned Judy's marketing at every career brunch, Judy McCoy, our senior director national. Um, I learned her marketing so well, I knew exactly when she recrossed her leg. I knew when she would scratch her nose because she had sinus infection. And so I knew I did everything she did when she did the marketing. I practically said, I'm Judy McCoy, married to Gary, Keith and Christy are my kids, you know, because I just memorized it and then made it mine. And that's the beauty of Mary Kay. She was smart. She, you know, I didn't buy this position. I had to earn it. And so why would we not follow the people who went before us? So... I hope that helps. <laughs> That's good. Yes, that was very good. Um, yeah. The question right above that on your paper from senior consultant Jen Gurry. When the going got tough, what kept you motivated to keep going and not throw in the towel and quit? Yeah, I think I, I already answered that when I said I relied on the product mm. and I relied on the marketing. And the other thing I would add to that, though, is I never stopped doing the fundamentals. So what I see people do when things are tough, you know, maybe your recruit has done this. You guys aren't because you're the choir. I'm preaching to the choir here. But you see your recruit stop coming to the meeting. Or you see someone even slip in their image. Oh, I'm not going to wear my red jacket. You know, I'm not going to wear pantyhose. Or I'm not going to... You know, we start slipping in those fundamentals that got us there. And so if you can keep tight to the fundamentals, keep going to the meeting, keep being on the Zoom, you know, just don't let that stink and think and overwhelm you. And know that if others did it, you could too, because nobody had a silver line beauty case. Maybe Lisa did, but nobody's had a silver line beauty case. And uh, so... 
you know, that's, I guess, what kept me going. But, you know, also, I'm a lifer, you guys. I, I kept both feet on the same side of the fence. And I'll tell you, when Jack lost his job and we were major in debt, 150000 I didn't wake up on those days going, I'm so excited, I can't pay the bills. And I quit my job and called Mary Kay because I panicked. And she called me back and left a message to book 20 classes on my books and to never look back and then get bookings from your bookings and not have to go on the 5,000 pound phone for survival. You know, once we get 10, 15, 20 on our books, we should be getting two, three, four bookings for every basic we sell should be a checkup facial or checkup facial booking. And so I didn't try to reinvent that wheel. I just kept doing those fundamentals. And, you know, it was tough because my family thought I flipped, that I quit my job. Jack even said, maybe you should stay being a hygienist. That's the only money coming in because he had to set up a business and take out a six figure loan. So he didn't bring money home for four to five years. And, you know, I don't call $50 here or there a profit, but he never said he wasn't making money. It was where he chose to put it. So every time we sell a lip gloss, we're making money. It's where we choose to put it to get the business to a profit level, like he had to buy the x-ray equipment and all that to get the business to a profit level. And so it took like five, six years to do that. So when I became a director, you know, my first check was over $4,000 that month. That was in 83. Today, that would probably be six grand. Yeah. And that's, that's because Mary Kay said, get your unit in a Cadillac. So that's what I did. And, you know, we had to eat. But I remember his family thinking I flipped because I was quitting dental hygiene and becoming a sales director. And, but see, I had been to seminar and I'd seen women on that stage, no different than me. And I saw Judy. Judy was the top director when I recruited. So I knew her husband quit his job. So I knew this was a business. You know, I knew this, you could make money at it if you worked, just like I did for someone else. And that's the key you know, work for you like you would for someone else. And here's the other thing I would say to my group sometimes, I'd say, pretend you have no other job. How would you work differently in your Mary Kay right now? Mm -hmm. You know, if you had no other job to pay the rent, how would you work your Mary Kay? Would you hold five classes a week like Mary Kay told me? Which is one of my favorite times with Mary Kay when she held my face and said, Nancy, just help other women. No, if they held five appointments a week, five classes a week, they would never have to work for anyone else again and keep my ethics and standards high. And I said, pinky promise, Mary Kay, you can count on me. And so if you're willing to hold five classes a week, you'll never have to work for anyone else again. And, you know, we can do a whole booking class and a coaching class and to keep those bookings on your books. But that's what I had to do. I had to hold five to seven classes to pay the bills. So um, when the tough got going, I, you know, when it got tough, I just had to get on my knees, pray to God, lead me to the people who need what I have. And I promise I'll train them, support them. I'll be a lifer. They can count on me through thick and thin. And, yes. uh, and you know, through the obstacles, you guys, I think when I had breast cancer, really, I would have had to quit dental hygiene. I mean, what they couldn't have moved patients. I couldn't have gone through radiation, but I had my retreat. So <laughs> at Blue Harbor. So I had two rounds of radiation. I can't, I drove home 90 miles to have a treatment at seven in the morning, drove back up to the retreat. Why? Because I can. And I wanted to show my people what's going to, what's going to stop you. Is this a perfect start or is it a perfect stop? You know, what's going to stop you? And I took care of myself and all of that. But I wanted to, you know, and I, I think that's it. When the want to and got to are bigger than the not to, mm -hmm. as I said in our little pre-class this tonight, you will keep going. You will keep going. Ugh, I have notebooks full of notes for <laughs> the years. I swear, I swear, I swear. Look at, okay, you got to see. Because you're getting all of this right now. You're getting all of this. So you have to make sure you see it, Nance, because they're all giving oh. you love. They oh, giving oh you I can't. Love. I don't know what to touch to do that. I'm, you know, I'm not real good at this. So no, that's I'll okay. Look at, okay. That's okay. You can, well, I'll send you the playback. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Okay. So from new senior beauty consultant, Ashley Zelly, what words okay. of wisdom or knowledge throughout your career always helped you recruit others and keep them successful and as excited about the business as you were? What words yeah. of wisdom or knowledge throughout your career helped you recruit others and keep them successful and as excited about the business as you were? And I think some of it I answered, you know, I think if you go to your meeting, you guys, and make that college in cash and bring your guests, and then you recruit them there, and then they know to bring guests every week. You know, when I do the marketing, I always say, if you, guests, if you can just give me you one night a week, yeah. if you can just give me you every Monday night, and you bring two, three, four, five guests every Monday night, I promise I can teach you to build a great business and a great backup of choices because isn't that what we're all doing in the beginning of Mary Kay we're building a backup of choices and options um, so use that meeting because then your recruits know to do that right monkey see monkey do they recruited at the meeting so they know okay I'm gonna bring guests and I'm gonna make money and you keep people connected that way and I know that I can influence them if they're just around me and they come to things so that's a key you know, really keep bringing your guests, whether it's Zoom or live or, and uh, let Lisa work for you, let uh, Andrea and Cece work for you, and you guys work for each other. I mean, that's a key. But I think when it comes to recruiting, you know, um, this is what I did when I became, uh, when I was a Red Jacket, Jack lost his job, I had five people on my team. And I had Nancy Joe, you know, she recruited everybody because I brought them to the meeting. So now I was going to have to learn to do the marketing better. And so I didn't want to recruit people and I didn't really want to sell people. What I feel our job description is, is to ask women's opinions of our facial and products at no obligation and to ask women's opinions and men of our career and marketing at no obligation. So I'll repeat that. I'm going to ask women's opinion of my facial and products at no obligation. And I'm going to ask women or men's opinion of my career and marketing plan at no obligation. And I began to just ask opinions. And I'm telling you, if, because if Nancy Jo would have said to me, Nancy, you'd be so good at this, I probably would have thought to her, well, how do you know that? You don't even hardly know me, you know? And so I think sometimes we do a disservice to the people and the marketing by going, oh, Lisa, you're going to be great. You know, I'm not saying that's bad. You can say it a little differently. You can say, um, Lisa, I couldn't help but to watch you and how you were watching me tonight at the skincare class. Does what I do intrigue you enough to know your options? Does what I do intrigue you enough to know your options intelligently. Uh, because I would love your opinion of what I do at no obligation to you or to our company. And then I could say to her, Lisa, you have the qualities we look for. You're such a go-getter and you're so kind and everybody loves you, you know, at this class. But I'm not gonna go, oh, Lisa, you'd be so good at what I do. Cause see, here's the scoop. If Lisa hasn't heard the marketing, then her answers are based on no intelligent information. My answers to whatever she gives me as an objection is based on intelligent information. I know the market. Yeah, yeah. So the war is on, right, you guys? The war is on. And so if I'm trying to recruit them, then the war is on. But if I try to sell the appointment to listen, so that's what I took as my power, so to speak. I wasn't in to recruit people. I was just going to ask opinions. And that June when Jack lost his job, I went around and did 30 interviews and just asked opinions. And I asked everybody. I didn't even hand select. I just asked everyone. Because first of all, I needed the experience. I needed to learn how to do the interview. I also wanted to give them a gift for doing this with me and not for me, but with me. And so you know, I just went around Milwaukee running, doing interviews. And I didn't necessarily select, and please hear my heart on this one, everyone's God's creature. 
but not everyone's right for Mary Kay. God knows we need customers too. You know, um, I, when I was a hygienist, I tried to save the world's teeth and guess what? The world's teeth didn't want to be saved. <laughs> and so, you know, not everyone are we going to recruit or is right for this business because we need customers too, you know, but I just asked everyone and the people who weren't right for Mary Kay, they got a lot out of it because they learned more about the company that they were buying from my little coin phrase. If this isn't for you, I promise you, you'll be a better customer. Just knowing the credibility of the company you're buying from. Mm -hmm. And I believe that with all my heart. Plus if we interview everybody, guess what? We're going to have pink, Mary Kay PR across the world. Everybody's going to know what the marketing stands for. Nobody's going to know, say, oh, that's a pyramid company, right? So to me, it was pink PR. I want to let everybody hear their options. And if it isn't for them, they might know someone. They can be a talent scout. So we've got that to handle too, you know, referrals and all that. But that's, that's really, and to this day, that's what I still teach. That's what I still did before I retired. I just asked opinions. And uh, I think that really helped my unit be successful. It helped my leaders emerge because everybody just, we just all went around asking opinions and, and they just learned my coin phrases, you know. I would love your opinion. If this isn't for you, I promise you, you'll be a better customer knowing the credibility of the company you're buying from. And if it isn't for you, you may know someone. And so uh, I, I hope that answers you well enough. I, I think I also answered it before, keeping both feet on the same side of the fence. I didn't, you know, if some, let me say it this way, you know, we're, we as women, we're either so high, we're going to become a national sales director, or we're so low, we're not even going to wear mascara. Do you agree? <laughs> and so we shouldn't feel overly excited if everything goes our way and we shouldn't feel doom and gloom if it doesn't go our way. So how do we keep ourselves evenly keeled in a sense, you know, emotionally. And I think as I approached it with opinions and I approached it with uh, the numbers, having 30 opinions in a month, 20 opinions, 10 opinions, you know, I think it kept me more emotionally sound and again, I just didn't sway from the fundamentals. If um, most people back off about the time it's going to take off, and I see it all the time. And yet, if you're not willing to let me have that insight with you, then I, there's not much I can do to help that because you are a volunteer. You know, it's your business. But at this level, I see it so clear when people make what I call mistakes. Not a mistake that hurts your self-esteem, but a mistake, right? How many mistakes did I have in my business where I went, whoops, I didn't get the guest list. Oops, I didn't follow up. I didn't follow up on the follow-up, you know, and that's a key to the business. That's what I was known for in Mary Kay, follow-up on the follow-up. Every guest got called the next day at my unit meetings. Every guest got called with a three-way with their consultant from every event. Every customer I facialed got a call in 24 hours to see how they slept on their skin, whether they bought or not. And that was real easy wording, you guys. Um, at the skincare class, I would just say, oh, you know, Dory, I understand you weren't ready to start on the skincare, but I always like to follow up the next day just to thank you, but also to see how you slept on your skin. Because if and when you're ready to start on the skincare, then I'm going to write down that those formulas were right on, or I might have to change something. So is there any reason why I couldn't call you tomorrow? just to see how you slept on your skin. And why that's so critical is how many people go home and they love the way that product felt and they didn't buy it. And then they go home, they put their soap on and they go, oh, my face fell off. I'm gonna call Nancy tomorrow and I'm gonna get that skincare. And then the kid throws up and the dog does his thing and the plant wilts and the husband's crabby. And guess what? I'm gonna call Nancy the next day. I'm gonna call Nancy the next day. Well, by Saturday, they don't even remember how bad their soap felt. So they're not on Mary Kay. But if you would have called them just to thank them, as my mother taught me, common courtesy, call everybody and thank them and send them a thank you note, guess what? You would have had a sale.
you would have had a follow-up booking and checkup facial, and you might have had a new recruit because who knows what, where the conversation would have gone. So I was obsessed with follow-up. I loved it. I embraced it. Um, and I preventively, because I'm a dental hygienist, so I'm preventive by nature, I prevented them, I prevented having to chase them by booking it that night. So at the class, I said, hey, is there any reason why, Dory, I couldn't call you tomorrow, which would be good for you, one o'clock, three o'clock, seven o'clock. So we set a time. Same philosophy with my unit. I thanked their guest, said, is there any reason why we couldn't call you tomorrow? I would love to know how you slept on our meeting. I would love your feedback so I can be a better director. When would be a good time to call you? One, three, or seven. And you know what, you guys? Most everybody we set up an appointment time with followed through. Well, when you have five guests, you may be able to just fly by the seat of your pants. But when we had 30 guests at the meeting, we had to have a system. And, you know, I can chase two people if I try to call them and they're not home, but I can't chase 30. Mm -hmm. And so I learned that as a consultant with my customers, you know, the, to set up those times. So I, I hope that helps you um, with some of that foundational stuff. Yes. Um, right now, from Maggie Fortman, what are you most thankful for in your business? You know, I am so, I got major goosebumps. I am so grateful that Nancy Jo persisted. And I hope if she was pushing me to do this, I hope and pray she was shoving. And that's always part of my marketing so that the guests go, oh, it's okay that Lisa's pushing me. You know, I hope and pray she was shoving because my life and countless lives were changed forever. And I have, I got to raise my children and yet I had an executive income. And I always introduce myself as a stay at home mother and an executive with Mary Kay. And I not only got to raise my children and be the room mom and the brownie queen and all that, but I provided college for free thanks to Pink Cadillacs, trips around the world. You know, my kids would have loved going to Kenosha, but gosh, we took them to Hawaii and Spain. And, you know, Jenny went to college in Spain and John went to all these debate things. And, you know, money doesn't buy happiness, but it certainly was fun to be able to do that for them. My mother, I was able to take care of her financially and physically. You know, I dropped everything to go take her to the doctor. However, I, if I changed that appointment, I put it in another place. Mm -hmm. So I use my weekly plan sheet to be able to go, mom, I can take you to the doctor today, change my connect call with Lisa, but I'm putting my call with Lisa on tomorrow now. And so my weekly plan sheet on the refrigerator gave me the balance and harmony and blend to mix it all up. But you know, we're always gonna have little regrets in life but I have no big regrets because I was able to design my own life and then to help all the countless women drive free too and stay home with their kids and rock their babies to sleep and to uh, have women feel that they're not too old to make a difference. You know, my unit was multi everything, multi color, size, shape, age, everything. I wanted to show everybody that everybody had a place in Mary Kay, you know? And so that to me, I'm most proud of. That was in the eighties when probably people didn't think that way, but I was raised that way, very multicultural, very multi everything. And so that was important to me, single women, married women, you know, divorced, short, tall, black, white, purple, green. I mean, we, we had it all and that I'm very proud of. Um, and so uh, I'm proud that I had that time with Mary Kay, that I could tell her that she could count on me to become a national and carry on her legacy and her ethics and standards, which I'll never apologize for. And I'm proud of you guys. I'm proud of Lisa and the high standards she's passed on to her offspring and and all of you that, you know, your image is so great. And you know what's so neat about that? You can be all vogue on the outside and vague underneath. The outside doesn't make the person. 
But when we fix ourselves up, guess what? We no longer have to think of ourselves now. We can think of the people who are there in front of us. If I had to think, oh, I didn't put my liner on or I don't, you know, didn't do my nails, and then who am I thinking about? I'm not thinking of you, how I'm going to help you tonight. I'm thinking about me. Mm -hmm. And so Mary Kay, when my unit came off stage in 1994 as a million one unit, and our unit were in the black suits and the red jackets and and my unit was on stage. They weren't worried. They weren't thinking, oh, I got flip-flops on and Mary Kay's sitting there looking at us. They weren't worried about their eyeshadow or anything. They had fun on stage in that Million Dollar March because they had fixed themselves up. Now they could just have fun. And you know, not a person could even hear a pin drop when my unit came on stage because the other two units, they were nice units, but you know, they had flip-flops and you know, they just, they weren't dressed that professional image inside and out. And so Mary Kay, when I came off stage, cause I had to give my speech next, I was in the pit with her and they called it the pit back then where you came off and she was there and she took my face and she said, thank you for keeping my image high. And I'm like, oh my gosh, can you imagine? So I never apologize for that. I will never apologize. And because I believe it gives us that confidence. And it's like, it's our uniform. It's, you know, it's our uniform, you guys. I had a uniform in hygiene. Can you imagine if I would have wore sandals and you had to look at my feet when I was cleaning your teeth? <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously. So I was raised with that type of image. You know, my mother taught me to have a good image. She was a stay-at-home mom, and yet my mom always got up early for her face on. She, she didn't have designer clothes or anything, but she would wear nice pants. She never wore jeans with us. I mean, I didn't even own a pair of jeans till I got married because my mother would never let us wear them. And so, you know, she taught me the standard of take care of yourself and then you can take care of others. Um, and she taught me to write thank you notes and appreciation notes. And Mary Kay taught me to, to expand that. Um, but my mother always taught us to write notes. And uh, so anyway, that's what I'm most proud of. And uh, being the person God intended me to be, to use all the gifts. That's why I can't stop passing it on because I think he still wants me to use those gifts in Mary Kay. And I would do it. I do it for no pay, you know, uh, because it's inside of you. Yeah. So. Ah. Yeah. This might be your best one yet, Nance. This could be ah. your best one yet. Oh. Seriously. I don't Does know. anybody have any questions? And you know, I don't know how your time is, but if you, I'm fine. Dan's not home yet. He's working late, so this is great. And uh, yeah. if you have questions, you guys let me know. Any other questions? I mean, I don't have questions, but I think you're awesome. I've taken awesome. so many notes, so I really <laughs> appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Nancy, Nancy. that's the fabulous Doris Thomas. Oh, and she is a great grandma. Yay. And she's killing it in the New London area. Right, Rhonda? Awesome. That's where she lives. And Rhonda is her daughter, and Rhonda's a red jacket. And we love those mother daughter teams. You know, we love them. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Good for uh, you. I see Bye. Dawn waving. Hey, Nancy. Thank you so much. Hi, for how are you, Dawn? <laughs> Good. Pretty as ever. Pretty as ever. Thank you. Um, I don't have a question, but um, just now my iPad unplugged itself and went out. So I had to plug it back in. And just then my boyfriend came along and I said, look at Nancy on the screen. And I said, she retired several years ago as an NSD. Well, he knows what age you are and he looked at you and his response was no stop lying to me and walked away. <laughs> I love him he's my favorite now <laughs> oh my but, gosh I know so can you believe I it I had to tell you that Aww. and um oh gosh I I've heard you speak so many times and I have I'm full of notes um 
but I love some things that you said of have the guts to get out of the ruts. You just kind of slid that in there because your brain, you just, it is, Mary Kay is so part of your core that I think you could be asleep and could answer, you know, <laughs> ask you these questions and you yep. still have these amazing answers that would just captivate the whole room. Yeah. Um, but I really, really love is when you said sell the appointment to ask the opinion. I, it, yeah. it gives just a different mindset and um, I think just will help some of the newer gals just take the pressure off of them. Yeah. Sell the appointment to listen, you know, just keep selling the appointment to listen and ask opinions. I have to tell you a funny story though, along with you, mm -hmm. what you said in your sleep, because when I had my first um, non-invasive back surgery uh, down in Tampa, Dan went with me, of course, and uh, the doctor was going to put me to sleep. And then uh, he let Dan come in with him. And I said, um, oh my gosh, Dan, you know, haven't you always wondered when you're put under an anesthetic what you say? I mean, I hope I'm nice. I hope I don't, <laughs> I hope I don't say anything embarrassing, you know, or, uh, you know, any bad words or any of that. So Dan's at my head, the anesthesiologist at my head, the doctor's at my other end at the back, and I'm, a, I'm asleep. I'm, and put in more twilight sleep because they do bring you up and kind of test to see if what they're doing hurts you or whatever. Anyway, so I'm asleep and all of a sudden Dan says, my head comes up and I say to the doctor, so Dr. Benatti, tell me a little bit about you and why you started this business for yourself. <laughs> So the doctor, he's, you know, at my rear and he's, he's like, is she talking to me? And the anesthesiologist is like, what did she say? And Dan's like, oh, she's just doing her Mary Kay thing. You know, she's just, she's interviewing you. <laughs> so okay. it, is in our, it is in our sleep too, you know, oh but uh, yeah. So I recruited him and found out a little bit about him while I was getting operated on. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Isn't that hysterical? Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. No, go. Andrea, but thank you. you. Yeah, I had a, just a quick question to piggyback off of um, exactly what you were just talking about, um, you know, selling the appointment to listen. How would you graciously address somebody who is reluctant to even listen? Uh, well, I guess it's, you know, what would, what would they say that, that would make you think that? What would they say? Um, f well, oh, I'm not interested. And then mm -hmm. I would say, well, I'm not asking you to start a business. I'm asking you to just listen. And then they'll just kind of be d dismissive and be like, mm. it's yeah. like, you know, they, Yeah. Well, yeah. Like and, and I certainly probably have had a few of those that I didn't get to listen that say that. But I think if, if we can just ask permission again, you know, I'm so big on that. When, when somebody gives you uh, a no, especially if it's personal, God, money, family, um, Andrea, may I ask you, you know, I'm not asking you to do this business right now. Just like you said, that was perfect. Um, I'm just asking for your opinion. I would appreciate your opinion for this part of my training. And I respect you because you're a successful businesswoman. And if this isn't for you, you might know someone. And I, I look at you as someone who loves to help others. So maybe giving a sincere compliment, um, taking it another step that way. Uh, and if they, if they give me a no two times by the third one, then I back off. And I just, you know, thank you for at least brainstorming with me. And if you do decide that you would listen, I would greatly appreciate it for our training. I would respect it because you're such a professional. And I just end it with kindness. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Thank you. And you could ask for a referral. I mean, you could say, hey, do you, do you know someone that deserves to know their options? See, I didn't say... Do you, do you know someone that would be good at Mary Kay? I didn't say that because 
again, the war is on, right? Yeah. I yeah. said, do you know someone who deserves to hear their options too? Especially in the millennium, everybody deserves to hear their options intelligently, right? That's great, Nancy. Thank you. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I took so many notes, my pen died. <laughs> that happens. Well, I would just yes. like to affirm. Oh, go ahead. I don't know if we are, how we're doing, Mom, so you just have to maybe guide us on yeah, that. Just, yes, you, let Maggie whenever. go, and then you go ahead, Cease. Go ahead, Fortman. Okay. Oh, she's frozen now. There she is. Okay, you're back. No. No? I, I was just scratching. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will say this, Nancy, I love you. It's always great to hear from you. I always hear more and more things that I love and utilize. And um, the cool thing is, is that our business, while some of the ways do change, the heart of it does not. And um, every time I hear you, that is a, a testament to that. So thank you for that reminder. Yeah. I really appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you too. And, you know, put your heart over the line and everything else will always follow you guys. And when all else fails, you know, Mary Kay would tell us to write 20 notes a day, right? And that would always help me when I was frustrated. It would help me throw my heart over the line if I can think of someone else, do something for someone else. And hey, I had snow blindness on my date book a lot. And those first couple years, it was hard. It was hard to get the appointments and coach them. And, and again, people are falling in love with you. They're falling in love with the product. It, it just gets simpler. And then the more we do, the better we get. And our yeses are today's business, but our noes are tomorrow's business. So you know, I didn't learn this in the yeses. That was easy when you said yes to me. But when someone said no, that's where I learned to overcome objections, right? That's when I learned when people say, how do you know what to say back? Well, because I got a lot of no's. And so I learned how to turn it around. And so thank you for that, you know, because, hey, I'm not perfect. You know, pray for progress, not perfection. I certainly fell forward to success. But you know, don't let anybody rain in your parade, you guys. Just don't allow anybody to rain in your parade. And if you need, you know, sometimes I would tell my people, call me, I'll give you a one minute red hot pity party, and then let's turn it around, right? And uh, sometimes I'd have to slap you up and put you back out there. But uh, yeah, keep your heart in the right place and don't let anybody mess with that, you know? So thank you for that. Ooh. Appreciate it, Maggie. One last before yeah. CC, Maggie Sherwin has something for you, Nancy. Sure. Go ahead, Megs. Hey, Nancy, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah. I just had oh, kind hey. of a maybe lighthearted, more fun question. Um, yeah. Since you've been in this business for so long and you've seen so many products and you've seen how some products have changed, I'm curious what some of your favorite products are from Oops, when you started and going she was frozen i didn't hear that she okay. said um am i good yep okay go ahead again uh, Amy. go ahead okay since you've been in the business for so long and you've seen so many different products and seen other products change i'm curious what some of your favorite products are either the old ones when you started and our more current ones yeah. Well, yeah, I've seen a lot of changes. You know, in the beginning, we just had, we had no concealers and we had the type of foundation that was really for oily skin or dry skin more than anything. It was the compact day radiance, they called it. So we sometimes slip and say day radiance, but we would mix yellow and white in the day radiances to make up our own concealers. And we didn't have liners either. We would use the eyeshadow wet to make liner. So, you know, the products have come so far. But I remember when Skin Revival came out, that was the first anti-aging type of product. I mean, we all bought it and we went like this, all the way down. Yes. <laughs> you know, I like get some lip. And so Skin Revival, I don't know, it was just something I really, really liked back then when that first came out. 
And now, of course, we have the day and night solution, which is kind of like that. And then we have all these newer things coming out. But um, we didn't have lip liner. Uh, we really, we didn't have eyeliners. It was crazy when you think about it. We, we would draw our lipstick like a line first and then fill in with the lipstick. So you had kind of like a lip liner. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, and we would give black skin people the wrong shade, it would turn them gray, you know, we'd give them yellow concealer and it turn them gray. So we, we really had to learn um, and run with it. But yeah, the products that my goodness have come such a long way. Yeah. That skin revival. That was interesting. Product. Remember skin and the nail care when we had nail care. That was oh, a riot. It was the best. Yeah. Everyone it loved was. it. It was yeah. the best. Gosh, so many, so many different things. Oh, but I think my favorite product is always extra emollient cream. I knew so, you were gonna say that. Yeah, yeah. Because here's the deal. I got a trick for you. When your eyes tear, because I have allergies, you take right away when it first starts tearing, you gotta do it right away. You put extra emollient night cream right in the corners. Now you have to be careful. You have to use waterproof mascara because otherwise your mascara will get on it and kind of run a little bit. But that helps my allergies. I don't have it as much anymore, but there were years that it was bad. But also if your ears ever get infected, I always coated my ears, my pierced ear with extra emollient night cream. Of course, when I was pregnant with Jesse, I coated my belly with extra emollient night cream so I didn't have any stretch marks you know, your hands and all kinds of multi uses for extra emollient night cream, which we could never claim, of course, but it's fun. And I would put, we had no eye creams back then. And because my skin was dry, extra emollient night cream was my night cream. So I put it all around my eyes too. Well, when I became a top director and I started going to Dallas more to do trainings and you know, things for the recruiting notebook and all this stuff, the whole staff would be like, why do you not have wrinkles? And I'm like, well, because I use extra emollient night cream. So I got Jill Wedding and, you know, all these people at corporate on extra emollient night cream around my eyes. So to this day, I still use extra emollient night cream on my eyes and on my throat and make sure you come around in the back of your neck because you don't want to be in church with your hair up and be 50 on this side and 80 on this side, right, you guys? <laughs> so you got to make sure you go all around and down your decollete and all that. So every morning, oily, Nancy. Yeah, every if you're oily skin, morning. you can't use it on your face, but you can use it on your eyes because you don't have oil blends there. And you can use it on your hands. When I was a hygienist, my hands would bleed from washing and gloves. So I'd coat them with extra emollient night cream and put gloves on. Yeah. Well, it definitely works. It definitely works for you, Nancy. And my boyfriend <laughs> is proof that he does yeah. not think that you're your age. Yeah, tell him he's my favorite now. <laughs> Please go ahead. Okay. Um, well, mine is just kind of a wrap up thought too, Nancy. And it's so fun because okay. we go so far back. And so many of you may not know, but um, Nancy and my grandma, and my mom had all been friends um, beginning Mary Kay days. And you were a baby. Yes, and her daughter Jess babysat me, which was so fun. Um, I'm sure, I mean, I don't remember, but I'm sure we had fun. <laughs> <laughs> you did. <laughs> really cool, just those kinds of relationships. One thing that you did say um, that I know for sure, for sure hit some people on this, um, this Zoom and people that are going to watch back is that... Um, like kind of about fixing yourself, you just, you just, you fix yourself and run. I love that. And you said in so many words, you didn't have the luxury to um, go work on yourself first. You didn't have that luxury. You got to fix it and run. And I love that because oftentimes we hear that in Mary Kay. Well, either you're not, oh, I'm not like you, or oh, I'm not the type, or I really need to work on myself, or I really need to do this, this, and this, and X, Y, Z, and the, I use your words, the sky turns red and the grass turns <laughs> Turn green, but right. like such a testament to what our company does is that process is exactly that. So it's so it's so it can be um, new and unfamiliar to um, encourage someone to work through that instead of waiting for it, um, but right. to work with it and to work. With it. So thank you for affirming that thought because yeah. it's one I have very often. We just appreciate yeah. you so much. Thank you. 
Yeah, you're welcome. Pray while you're running and and fix while you're running and working and and it and actually I think it works better that way than trying to do one thing at a time, you know, just that's the beauty of Mary Kay, we get to do it all together. And so uh yeah, perfect. Thank you. Oh, Nancy, you're my favorite. Aww, you're my favorite. Don't tell anybody. You guys are all my favorites. Please. Mama, go ahead real quick. Okay. I just wanted to remind you that way back when in the olden days, you <laughs> reminded me at the airport to make sure that I used my extra emollient cream on my ears because nobody likes old ears on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I do. <laughs> oh, good, Dory. Good. Me too. Mine are starting to droop. I'm like, what's uh, that? <laughs> you know, that's gravity. <laughs> Oh, my that's goodness. why my hair's longer now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cover it up. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, too fun. Well, Nancy, if I could just take a moment and lift you up and thank you and wow. show our gratitude and our appreciation for you. You know, you were the very first speaker that I heard at the very first Mary Kay event I went to at that career brunch downtown at the Wisconsin Club. You were the MC. You were looking sharp and I heard you speaking and I was like, wow, that woman. I wonder if I could ever know her. I wonder if I could ever look like her. I wonder if I could ever be that confident. And you were always ever, Andrea said the word gracious. You have always been so gracious and I really hope and pray that our team has really soaked you up tonight because you're so well respected by the company. You're so well respected by so many people. And when you say about countless lives, you know, every single one of these women here, whether they know it or not, uh, already has learned from you because I learned from you. And I say the things you said, and I do the things you do. And I think of you every day when I use my extra night cream and I go behind my neck every single day. And I'm like, Nancy said, don't be old in the back. Don't be old in the back. I mean, right. And the, the things that I teach women with little kids about that special box of toys. Oh, I know. For when you're on the phone and they only get them then. I teach people that because you taught us that. And Cece and the boys got special toys when I was on the phone and the, oh. the lessons that, that come out of my mouth that I say, I'm like, Oh, well, I learned this from Nancy Moser. You should try this. And we do it oh. and it works. And I, I appreciate the lunch that we had when I was a brand new director. And I just appreciate the guidance and the willingness and the go give spirit that you have that you've always had because you know, I'm not financially connected to Nancy. We were in the same family of beauty consultants and sales directors under uh, Judy McCoy, but Nancy is an offspring sales director of Judy McCoy. She's not my director. Nancy didn't make any money from working with me. She didn't make any money when she was offering to help have Jesse babysit CC. You know, she didn't make any money doing that. She doesn't make any money coming on these things and, and doing all of this, this outreach that she does. This is Mary Kay. When she says there's no other company like it and there's no one else doing this, she speaks from the truth, the heart, 40 years, she knows. So thank you, Nance, for just, for being my friend. Ah! I know, good friendship, it's so awesome. And Lisa, I'm so proud of you. You guys, you need to make sure Lisa and your unit achieve that $650,000 club. The company needs Lisa's ethics and standards on that trip, that'll raise Andrea up, and uh, CC up and all of you, but you know, the company needs to know Lisa, Lisa Cadillac Mac and know her even more. And I know they know you, but you need to be a voice on that trip to keep Mary Kay's standards high and yeah. all of that. And so my unit always was like racing like crazy to make sure we were a circle of excellence unit because they wanted me to be able to contribute and to know the secrets and to come back and to share what we were doing to be successful with the company. And so this is your year, you guys, this is your time to make this happen. And 
for Andrea and Cece, you're going to step up for Dory, for everybody. You guys just build those teams within teams. Keep building, you know, people who have teams with your team. And that's really the key. And that's why I just keep bringing them to everything Lisa and the directors provide for you and don't overcomplicate it. But it's my pleasure. I love your guts. I don't know. I just fell in love with you the minute I met you and I wanted to help you. I knew how it was to be a mom and yet to be a single mom, I thought, oh, and so I was excited that my daughter could help you and that uh, we just had that connection, you know. So uh, thank you for letting me come on tonight and I'll look forward to hearing all the results, you guys. And uh, three plus three by, drives free forever. So just keep doing that. Yes. And, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All the love, all the feels, all the love, all the feels. All right. Lastly, real quick. All right. Pink Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday. You guys got a great weekend coming. Reminder, Friday morning, Good Morning America, 8.30 a.m., your oh. time zone. Yes. Wow. Louise Costco oh. and Callie DeBrigger. Callie De Blander Brigham, you know, our number one, our number one director in the company, oh. Kelly De Blander, is going to be on with Keith Costco, 8.30 a.m. This I Monday? Central Standard, but it's 8.30 wherever you live. Um, doing, I don't know what, I don't know what they're doing. I don't even know if we know. Is um, that this Monday? This coming Monday? Next week? Friday. Friday. Oh, Friday. Friday, Friday okay. morning. Set Friday. your VCRs. Do people set VCRs? I don't know. <laughs> it's, no, they don't. But whatever they set, record it, watch it, whatever. Get it on your phone. Notification on your phone. That's what people get. Yes. Um, and then I already mentioned dinner. Watch for virtual next Monday. We will be virtual again next Monday. Watch for details on that. We've got some exciting things coming up for you. Love you. Thank you. Proud of you. Yay. Thank you for who you be. Nancy, thank you so very much for your love, love well. and your time and your love you, love you. energy. Love you Can't all. Can't wait to come back to your meeting live. Have a good yes. night. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank happy, you. Happy dreams. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Thankful for you all. Yay.